This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about When a Woman Ascends the Stairs from 1960, directed by Mikio Naruse. RJ, no tagline for this film. You know about that? How, how do films not have taglines? Uh, what would you tagline this film right now? <clears throat> she thought it would be an easy way to the top. And that's it? That's it? And it'll be like ellipsis and an exclamation mark. I'm gonna go with a line from the movie. You know what you know how sometimes you know how sometimes they'll just have like an in quote line from the movie? Yeah. That's what I would have for the tagline. I would just say, fat people are always nice. <laughs> exclamation mark. <laughs> exclamation mark. And it said three out of four agree. Three out of four what? I wouldn't say. A synopsis for this film. Kiko, whom everyone calls Mama, narrates Ooh. her story. She's a hostess on the Ginza. Ginja? She's 30. A widow. She describes life's vicious cycle, acting cheerful around drunks, dressing and living well to convey confidence, needing money for those uh, expenses, and for her, demanding mother and brother, and knowing she's growing older, She's of an age when she must choose to seek marriage, difficult given her tarnished occupation, to be a kept woman, or to borrow money to buy a bar of her own. Each route has dangers, including investors demanding a return on their loans. Kiko Mm. has a quiet dignity that attracts men. But are they what they seem? Does she actually have choices? (laughs) Um, well... what is, well, what is that's a one of the more peculiar synopses I've read, I think. Tell me more. That's it. Tell me about the choices. I don't know. It's like oh. uh, either <laughs> get old or die trying. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Uh, anyways, so uh, this is, I believe, the first. Uh, Nuruse film uh, we've ever watched. Yes, it is. It is his most popular film. Uh, I guess he is a director that didn't really have much traction when he was alive. He died in 1969. But via, you know, revivals and, you know, things like DVD, things like the mm-hmm. Criterion, uh, kind of kept him around and established him as one of those... Uh, Japanese directors to be noted kind of in your Ozu kind of side of things. Mm. And I say, sure, why not? Why not? Uh, so yeah, I'd never seen this before myself. And I always see this title and I always just think of like the Marcel Duchamp painting. You know about that one? The the what? Sorry, the Marsh, Marshall Mar- Mar- Marcel Mar- Mar- Marcel Duchamp, new, new Descending a Staircase. It's a, um, it's, a, it's a it's a pretty oh uh, that's one fam- of my favorites it's a pretty famous painting uh, yeah i love that one it's right by the um number two even yeah it's right by the other one which is pretty cool <clears throat> so anyway that's what pops into my mind when i read this and i go is this gonna be a some art house stuff and it's like no it's just a it's just a drama a melodrama um what does the mellow mean what does i don't that know for? people people like to say it but they they're, they're very careful in how they deploy it yeah well that's what i mean i've never really understood what mellow drama means and i'm not looking it up either i just yeah well if you had a guess what what do you think it means like mellow like a vibe Mm -hmm. melodic drama like it's a mellow drama like it's never too heavy but it's like kind of heavy essentially it's like a poetry jarrett it rhymes (laughs) um well i'm looking it up because it's funny to me. Uh, relating to melodrama, melodramatic, a melodramatic comedy about Slavic minors. Oh, really? That's pretty good. Oh, yeah, I guess it wouldn't be very melodramatic. This is pretty... Uh, it's not too, it's not too uh, exaggerated. Tell me more about the Slavic minors, though. I don't know. They're on... Just ask dictionary.com about the Slavic minors. <laughs> my hearts go out to them. All my hearts. Yeah. Do you think they have a union? Uh, probably not. Right. They try to, but then the cruel owner cracks that whip. It's too bad. Damn. 
So, um, <clears throat> this movie opens up uh, in one of those bars you see in Japanese movies where um, women work at these bars as employees. And they're there to uh, entertain men. They don't use that word, RJ. They did at one point. They at do, one point? They, they, <sighs> there is a drop of a geisha at one point. I see. I guess that's... Yeah. They generally don't, though, because it's more of like the... It's a bit more traditional than that, I guess. This may be like the modern equivalent, the 1960s uh, version of that. Um, where it's like, yeah, you have women that work these bars for salary men types. Um, or these are a little bit more, I don't know, we call them. They're, they're above, entertainers. Well, they're, the women are entertainers, but the men, that, the clients, I mean. Oh, they're uh, like CEOs and stuff. And yeah, like business, so so, businessmen. So, Businessmen, I mean, they're probably, I feel like they're a step above salary men. Yeah. But, but anyone can just walk into there. Right. There, but the, there is a high clientele, but. Like, but but the, the guys who pay the, the ones that pay the bills, though, are the, mm -hmm. the, the high rolling, the, the repeat business. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. There was a book I read like years ago. Uh, it's like a true crime thing. It's like called Into the Darkness or something like that. And it's basically how there's these clubs that are like, there's like the ones that cater to like Japanese. Uh, business class, but there's like the the higher class one or the one where the Japanese women go, the ones that have like a a higher cat. Like this is like the kind of hierarchical way that the, this is viewed. But like the Japanese women would go to like the higher end one because they, they didn't want to necessarily tarnish uh, a Japanese woman this way. But then there's also the clubs where like essentially you're like you know your foreigner women would go, but there's like different degrees there too because there's like the ones where it's like oh this is the one where the American women work. And so these mm. these Japanese men come and they go, oh hi, I want to learn, I want to work on my English. But if we happen to go back to my place after I pay you for sex, that's okay too. Wink. And there's always the wink, but it's, it's it's but it's your choice. It's your choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. And it's not like some like unscrupulous owner will like be like, hey, this guy's a real good client. He's a real good customer. And, uh, I mean, I, I could hire someone else that is willing to go the distance, Monica or Kiko Mom. or whoever. No, it's all just about, uh, are, are you getting the money in? doesn't matter how you do it. Just keep the house full. You know what I mean, Jared? That's right. Yeah, keep the house full. Make sure that we got <laughs> nothing but cash. Some, some, some might say keeping butts in seats, RJ. Oh, would they say that? They, they might say that. There's standing room at the bar, though. <laughs> there is. So, yeah, you know. That works, too. Uh, okay. feet, feet on floor. <laughs> so, well, yeah, yes, that as well. Yeah. I guess if you're sitting and lounging, you might not even have your feet on the floor. It's all about semantics, you know? Yeah. So, Kiko, yeah. she's like, uh, she's popular at this particular uh, establishment. Mm -hmm. But she's getting old in age, turning a, a ripe old 30. Hey man, thirty used to be used to be like seventy. I know. I know thirty now is like fifteen, but thirty <laughs> used to be the seventy. Yeah. You know how they say thirty year olds are like teenagers. Um. Well, I think I do think that adulthood doesn't probably really begin until you're like twenty five. For a a lot of the university age kids I encounter, they all, they all seem like little high school kids to me. Brain's and, not uh, fully developed for men until twenty eight, women until twenty five, roughly. Oh, is that roughly. part of your, uh, is this part of your uh, your fake sciences? Absolute science. You can Google it right now. You can look up Absolute. when does when, when does the brain finish developing? Women is around twenty five. Men is around twenty eight. Uh huh. And I'm saying around because it is different for everyone, but that that is the a average. Around. Around. <laughs> Plus or minus two years either end. Yeah. What about the and and what do we do with this information? Nothing. Nothing. You're just saying that <laughs> you're saying some of the twenty five still seem like kids. It's like, yeah, they are. Well, I say that like I, I feel like you're into your twenty five. But is, but is that what an adult is? Is a fully formed brain? That that doesn't really make any sense. Uh what would you how would you well, define an an adult? Someone who pays uh, uh, bills? Uh, well, I'm just saying that like they seem to take upon responsibility more, which I don't know if that with a fully formed brain or not. Uh, I, I, I just, uh, I feel like, 
this is like more an observation. There's a lot of a lot of kids. Mm-hmm. They they just um, society society RJ. You know about uh-huh. society. It ain't helping them out too much. It's uh, okay. not a lot of jobs out there. A lot of oh, kids no. stay at home longer. People go to school uh-huh. lo- way longer than they need to. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so it, it's extended adolescence. Well, and but I mean, there's like, hey, in Italy, you got you got the mama's boy. Yeah, the, the the and it's like that's a forty year old man. I don't think his brain's still uh, still developing. Yeah, no, not him. But uh, not his. Not his. But I mean, all that really matters is the Canadian government says that at eighteen you are a, an adult citizen. You, you so. can smoke and drink all you want. Uh huh. And own <laughs> land and well, in this in, in this in this province anyway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can definitely. Start some smoking. provinces are nineteen, but in this pro yeah. this Canadian province. You were an adult at 18. Smoke them if you got them, boys. Exactly. Exactly. And in, you know, other countries, it's like 16. So even, even cooler. 16 year olds who smoke, super cool. So, so, so Kiko. Yeah. Yeah. There's, she's feeling some pressure. That's like, hey, you get, she's very popular, but it's like, hey, uh, we've lost some clients. Business is down. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, you better go uh, make a phone call to Mr. So and so and make sure that him and his uh his crew at the office start coming by again. We got we got to sell more drinks cuz that's what it's about. Selling drinks. Yeah. Keep keep keeping them company, let them like flirt with you and buy even more alcohol, which you will also drink. We'll keep that sake going cuz sake's cheap, but uh we with that markup, uh you can you, this is a nice little business we've got going. We got bills to pay. Mm-hmm. So there's always this pressure though that in this world that uh you're more I guess like when you're, the only thing that you can really do in this scenario, you know, if you're a, a Kiko, if you're an employee, is potentially start your own business, uh, which apparently has this uh, image of like, well, once you do that, you're set. <laughs> like you're you're your own boss, <laughs> um, which you know might not necessarily go so hot at the end of the day, uh, as it turns out, because uh, getting the kind of money you need to start your own business like any business it's 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 not uh, a little sum it never has been and you're gonna need investors and of course it's like well uh when you're in this business you know a lot of men they got a lot of money and they're willing to throw it around but a lot of these men they want something in return rj like uh, a percentage of the income yeah for starters oh okay what else like yeah. um they want a percentage like free of drinks? they want a percentage of that ass, RJ. Could they're, you repeat that for the courtroom? They're real bad dudes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Understood. Yeah, but it's always like it's so like oh look this little Japanese man he's like oh I'm gonna give you this money, and they're like oh you're gonna give it to me he's like well yeah, something like that. <laughs> you go oh. Mm-hmm. And like you know, it's like oh, you know, if I take this, and of course, it's like these guys are always married. Yeah, uh, yeah. pretty pretty. They're always like ah, oh, you know, I gotta go back to the wife. But I you know if I take I take this money home with me, she's just gonna spend it, and uh, I can't have that. I want to I want to keep it in, I want to keep it investing. You know, turn it over, maybe help uh, help a gal out, and then they wink. Mm-hmm. Maybe so, you can help, and they can maybe you can help me out. Wink. But if I take this home, my wife's gonna spend it on bonbons and uh, mm-hmm. um, and that's it. That's but you, just, just bonbons. Said you could turn this into something big, something huge, something no one else has ever done. Something, you know, people come to the club for some, you. Some, something huge in my kimono. Uh, oh, where is it? <laughs> where, where did you find this thing? In in my kimono, RJ. Oh. What kind, what kind of kimono would you sick, have? Sick. Uh, one like Splinter. Oh, uh, yeah. Splinter's is so like, like it's, it's, the Hugh Hefner little... kind of robe. Yeah. It's like... Where it's like red with. A... Kind of, or purple. It's like a magenta. It depends on who colors it, I guess. Yeah, this is kind of horseshit. I Googled Splinter and he wasn't the first thing that came up. Oh, come on. Like, yeah. it was like how to get a splinter out of your finger? No, it was uh, yeah. that horror movie Splinter. Oh, <laughs> okay. It, yeah, the, okay, so, in, the movie in the gas station. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, so it's, it's like red, 
burgundy with a black belt, and then he's got kind of like um, ah, on each breast, burgundy, burgundy. Each breast has kind of like a like a little symbol, but each variation has a, a kind of a different one. And then there was the Michael Bay Splinter. Oh my God, have you ever seen this thing? Nope. Oh, it's I horrifying. I, I, I think I'm good. Ugh. Okay, never mind. Uh, what were we talking? Okay, come on. So, yeah. so yeah, so Kiko's got this idea. Like, you know, she's got to she's got to figure something out. So her husband died, um, and she's talking to one. Uh, is it a coworker or one of the uh, like one of the other women that works there? And I think there's this uh, observation. It's like, oh, he's a little chubby. <laughs> there's there's a lot of oh, like right. uh, body observation going on yes, there in is. this film. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot, a lot of comments on. A lot, well, there's a lot, a lot of, of policing about, about that guy being a little bit thick, and then uh, they talk about uh, Keiko, her ex or her dead husband, was a little yeah. bit plumper. So well, they bug chugging. her about that. They bug him yeah. about bug her about that a lot too. Yeah. They say, ah, you like the porky ones, huh? And then she goes, <laughs> "What?" Yeah. Uh. She said, "I thought he was a nice man," and they go, "Oh, sure, sure." Sure you did. We heard he died, and you said like sent him a card or something. Pfft, oh, right. and she's like, "No, I must have just said that because he was drunk. I never really, really meant that, but did she did?" Yeah. Um, but anyways, so there's kind of like the whole the first like 50 minutes of this movie I found pretty good. Um, yep. it's pretty much just her like you're being introduced to kind of like the world that she's in. There's like the guy who works the bar. Uh, kind of the bartender. Uh, I think it's, is it Junko? Uh, it's like, like is, is yeah. the friend that she's the one talking about chubby dead husbands. Yeah, um, Junko is the friend who she's like the young, uh, like the young working girl who um, like drinks a lot and kind of passes out all the time. But she's she's young, so she's trying to like break in, kind of. That's Junko, right? I think so. Yeah. And then there's the guy who's kind of like the the very polite muscle of the bar, who's like basically just sleeps with the girls, with the ones that are he'll, that will sleep with him. Um, I can't remember his name though. Uh, which one? Uh the the only one there is the younger guy. The younger guy? Oh, like the bodyguard guy? Yeah. Uh, he had a stupid name. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. I'll, I'll I'll find it here. He had kind of there was a guy. Zigoda, <laughs> I don't know. Or is, Go- a- is Abe Z- Zagoda? Abe Zagoda. Uh, no, Fujisaki is the guy that she the big yeah. high end guy. The, yeah, the, the 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 old the old man. That that's an old man. Yeah, and, uh, and but apparently he's manager. like manager. Yeah. Sakin Goda. Is it Goda? Go, I think it's uh Goda looks pretty old too. Mino, Minobi Yuri Yuri? Tomoko Goldfish Matsui Yoshi Yoshitsu. Maybe it's uh can, can, the man the or Kiko's manager is Tatsuya Nakada is Kenichi Komatsu. Maybe you're thinking of Sonoda. Sonoda. <laughs> Shinobi? Instead of Goda, Sonoda. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, then, yeah, because then there's a uh, Sakin, who's he's he's the guy that like <laughs> she accepts his offer to be married. He's kind of fat. Yeah, he's the fat. And then of course, like you're like, oh, look, she's settling for the fat guy, and then it turns out, oh, he's full of shit. Okay, so what? What actually? Like, so she's constantly being like told that she's gonna age out soon, and her her mm-hmm. bar isn't as thriving as it is, and then. Someone who was a worker for her leaves, starts a fancier bar, and then it, all of the clients go over there, mm-hmm. and she sees how well she's doing, and she's like, "Damn!" And then what happens is her bar y- starts. To... Yuri, Yuri, the former yeah. employee, yeah. And then she meets with her, and that girl's like, "I, I gotta level with you. I'm out. I'm done with the world. I'm a the world. I'm like, I, I'm well, I got, my, I got debts. I got debts. But no, I think this her her idea though is that she's going to." uh attempt suicide but which will like which will alleviate the pressure that she's debts. getting from the people that she owes the debts to but yeah. she goes too far with the suicide attempt and she actually, she actually dies. dies she yeah. succeeds 
in her suicide by accident yeah. and just and it doesn't mean anything because the the guys that she owes money to now just want it from her family her family yeah because yeah. so like while this is happening so our girl keiko or mama which i think is the better one they all call her mama yeah um she she's considering opening up her own bar because she's aging out and then she sees this girl, young girl who's doing so successful and then that girl sits her down and is just like listen I got to buy like nine kimonos a day uh, just to keep up with the trends. And she's like, all the, uh, all the stains. Yeah. All this. Well, I, I didn't use that word. Um, she's like, I, yeah, I'm going to pretend to kill myself so that the uh, debt collectors don't come after me. But then she does kill herself. So then mama's sad. Um, and then she's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. And then mama gets sick. Mama gets an ulcer because she's, and she's sad. She, she kind of, she gets an ulcer and then she goes home for a while and then uh what's that guy's name what's fat boy's name oh uh sakin sakin yeah he comes to visit and he's nice to her and then he's like listen mama he's like you're such a nice lady and like i just gotta tell you I, i'd marry you i would he's like you shouldn't be working in a place like that and because she was basically given two options you either keep working there or you you or you marry a guy or you buy your own place or something so she's like, all right, I will marry you. Uh, and then uh, the next day, that, that guy's wife calls her and is like, hey, listen, she come down here. Is like, I really hope he didn't get you because he's kind of a piece of shit. And he, he just like lies to sleep with women. So like, he's like, she's like, you seem smarter and prettier than that. So hopefully you didn't get God on that one. Yeah, you're, you're prettier than that. That makes she, sense. That's what she, I think she does say. She, it's something like, hopefully a pretty girl like you didn't fall for that. And he's just like, oh, dear. Oh, um, Japan. Yeah. So then so then Mama's really in bad shape. Um she's not really sure what to do. Uh, the world just keeps dumping on her. Yeah, yeah. It's a dump run, like mm-hmm. times ten, you know what and I mean? And during the winter. During the it's a winter dump run. That's even harder, some have said. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes so it's then, easier to leave it in the alley than someone else's problem. Well, yeah, but pick the right alley. Pick the right alley. I so, you, not your own. I got the address. Just call me. I, I know where it is. It's close to my house, just a block or two the other way. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so she's feeling pretty sad for herself, and uh, she kind of goes to, like, one of the the bigger, richer, but nicer business guys. Maybe not richer, but one of the big business guys, and he's, like, one of the nicer ones. And uh, she's like, what do I do? And he's like, I don't know, but I'm leaving. Peace. And then he leaves, and then uh, Mom is just kind of left alone, right? To hang out. Hang out. Yeah. Just well, kinda... she well she bangs. She does have sex with a man. The fat guy, right? No, uh, Fujisaki, the guy she's like really into, but he's like she's really oh, into. Yeah. He's like they're all married trying, men, of course. Yeah, she's trying to convince him to be like come. Well, well, they're going to do it, and then he after after the night after he's like ah. Yeah. I feel bad about that. Uh, I got moving to Osaka. That's where my work is. Got to be closer, you know. Go well, with the fam. The fam. Uh, see you later, you know, alligator. A, yeah, and you, for a while you're gonna go. I wonder what the play is here. But the thing with her, her character, why she was so desirable, was that she did not succumb to the men, Jarrett. Mm-hmm. She she never did. She was always kind of like. Ne- never did it so all the men wanted her more you know jared and then uh, once that guy has it i think i think what the movie's trying to say is that um wait until marriage preserve yeah. yourself mm-hmm. and then and then once you once you're married you're locked in you're locked in jared do you know what i mean um yeah. Oh, and then the bartender. And yeah, he leaves. Oh, and the bartender comes and yells at her a bit. Yeah. He's like, you just... didn't sleep. You never slept with anyone. You were the best of us. And then. Yeah. And now you did this. He says, I can't even look at you. You're disgusting. But let's get married. And she's like, yeah. we can't get married. We know each other too well. Which I thought was kind of funny. And it's like, well, you know, I really like the guy who just like fucked me and left me. <laughs> um. So anyway, uh, he quits the bar, and uh, she goes back to work. She's going back up those stairs that she doesn't like. Is it because it's hard to go back to work, and you got to put on the mask 
you gotta put on the mask of happiness and deal with this all all again for the rest of your days hmm. Jared, what do you think the stairs are? Are they a metaphor? Well, I think they're literal and figurative. Oh, wow. Oh. What do you think the stairs say about us as a society? <laughs> well, as um, <clears throat> uh, Philip Lepate says in his oh. essay, when a woman ascends the stairs, they endure. Um, he starts off one paragraph saying, the stairs in the title are both literal and symbolic conveying the idea that Kiko is on a Sisyphean vertical treadmill. Oh, trying to get somewhere in this life as a woman on her own. I mean, I don't think that's necessarily the thing. I don't think she's a... Is he talking about Sisyphus? Yeah. I don't think it's that. It's just this lady had a couple bombs. It's not like she was... Men are bad. That's the point of this one. You know about that, Jerry? <laughs> Is that the point? Yeah. Man. Well, I was gonna. Well, you keep t- keep telling me oh, about this guy's are, moral. And, and, well, then. Well, anyway, this this guy's got some real. Uh, I think there's like what some of these I was reading. I just. Uh, oh yeah, classic forlorn Narusa and Oh, why? Well, classic, <laughs> classic forlorn. <laughs> I mean, you you go into one of these and you just know right off the bat it's gonna be classic. Classic. Uh, who would you say? Who say? Classic. Um, classic. Classic. Yeah, I know. It's just like when you, you know, you get a pizza, and there's good pizzas and there's bad pizzas, but they're all pizza. It's just like walking into this one. You go, yeah, you say, yeah, this is gonna be a classic one, just like yeah. all his other pizzas. Everyone knows about Naruse pizza. Uh, yeah. Who doesn't? You know. Yeah. Uh, I. Uh, oh yeah. We also have stuff with her family. Things are always coming up, up, right? It's like, hey, your brother needs uh, some medicine for his polio. Um, I'm sorry, well, or, or an operation. Son. Yeah. So yeah, his son. And then, there's, there's her, her, and then there's her brother, who's her also brother's like, a real piece of shit. I need money. I'll, I'll never come again, but I just need some money. So even though she's got a little bit of money, it's not enough money. But always family's coming up, and she's like, "Fuck off!" But then she winds up caving. She goes back. She seesaws back and forth. Well. I mean, her brother, she kind of, she caves in all the time, but I think it's one of the saddest scenes in cinematic history. Cinematic where, history, you say? Cinematic history, or not really, but I, I could see this being, um, I don't know, like in a Chappelle show skit because of how sad it is, just like out of nowhere. It's like, oh yeah, his son's got polio, he can't even walk right. And then it just cuts to this kid, like, struggling with crutches, kind of like falling over, and then it cuts away, and then that's all you see of this kid, is that he can't even walk, and you're just like, oh. It's like comically, it, it's so sad, it's comical, Jared. You know what I mean? There you go. Yeah. So sad. What were we talking about? Uh, Lawrence just messaged me with the an article that you sent my way already. Andor is a masterclass in good writing. Yeah, I, I I heard it's really revitalized the franchise, Jarrett. You know, what's yep. going to re- revitalize your franchise? A, fr- uh, fr- a, fr- a fresh coat of paint. Yeah, for the stairs and uh, Japanese cinema. Absolutely. Some have said. Absolutely. Um, so overall in this movie, I was like on board with this for about the first half. Okay. I was like, oh, this is like a compelling story. I'm kind of like, I, I like the, it, it's well made. Uh, it's pretty well paced. It's, it, just, it wasn't dragging too much. But mm-hmm. then around like the 50 minute mark, my, uh, it just sort of kind of like became very repetitive. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, oh, this is how she's going to get built, but not like in any, like, oh my god, this this family, these guys. It didn't like, it didn't hook me in, in a way okay. where I was like, in the story and like rooting for her one way or another, or like feeling that she was being dragged down. And you're kind of like, oh no, oh no, like it just didn't work that way. And that wasn't the type of movie that was being made either. But it's kind of the movie that I would, I don't know, would watch and like wanted to like know what happens next. But it came to this point where you're like, oh. Well, this is going to tell the story in probably the most kind of boring way possible. And, uh, yeah, I felt like it really ran out of steam uh, about halfway through. And it just kind of came to a stop. And you're like, yep, that's that woman ascending the stairs. 
Isn't that fitting? But what are the stairs a metaphor for? Getting ahead, baby. Oh, okay. Okay. Get, it's get, it's what, grabbing that brass ring. Like oh. Vince McMahon always told me. Grab that brass ring. But the but they don't mention that glass ceiling. <laughs> you know, I start throwing in all sorts of metaphors and just busy it up. Really Let occupy it. I, I don't know. That's all I got. Oh, okay. Um, but she really hates it, but she winds up having to climb those stairs, RJ. She at the end of the day. Yeah. What do there you is think no climbing. Learned? It's Sisyphean. Oh wow. Wow. Nothing you know what the lesson is? In what? the words of Homer J. Simpson, never try. I mean, yeah, because then you don't you're not disappointed. Yeah. And then eventually you get ground down and wind up having to have sex with men that you don't want to have sex with. It's cool. Is that cool. is that how it happens for everybody? Well, it's a, is, is this a warning film saying don't wind up like this, Japan? I don't know. I don't think that's the intent. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, it is like a this is like a you know it's jazzy 1960s Japan. It's on the economic upturn after the post war downturn. Mm-hmm. So this is like hey, modern life. It's not all it's cracked up to be. No. Don't be but salacious. I mean, Don't be out there being weird and gross. What, should we go back to feudal times? Maybe. Some some of these guys might think that. What was so feudal about it? Seems Things seemed okay. <laughs> you know what I mean, Jared? Uh, no. No? You're mm. more of a Ming Dynasty kind of guy <laughs> than a feudal Japan kind of guy? <laughs> Ming Dynasty. What about the uh, Kang Dynasty? Ooh. Are you into that? <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Good stuff. So, RJ, what did you think yeah. about this staircase? More like a stair master, you know what I mean? Whoa, like that, it that never could be, ended. That could be really cool if you're Ric Flair. He, he, he was like, he, he lived on the stair master. I know, but you know the thing about a stair master? Kind of Sisyphusian. Whoa, I wonder if Philip knew that uh, Stairmasters existed when he wrote that piece. Like He had to have. Ten he years just, ago. He, he uh, they're just new, it. new to him. New to him. I think he missed it, and he's a damn fool. A he's damn a damn fool. fool for not Cla- coming up with Classic Phil. Classic Phil. What an idiot. So anyways, uh, I... I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very similar to you. Like uh, the first half of this movie, I was like, yeah, all right. And near the back end, I, I, I lost steam really fast. But um, yeah. I was, I watched the whole thing, which I know doesn't seem like. Uh, uh, <laughs> what? I, I watched the whole thing, Jarrett. Like I, I didn't like wane too much. I like I was you watching. Didn't, you, it. you didn't rest your eyes. I didn't rest my eyes. I didn't, you know, go get a sandwich without pausing it or anything <laughs> like that. I wa- I watched. Get those. Uh, get that roast beast and uh, sweet pickle sweet sandwich pickles. going. Yeah. Oh, you gotta get the sweet pickles, baby. Um, I watched it all, and there was some stuff I I I, uh, I liked about it. But mm-hmm. I I will say, about three quarters of the way through, I was kind of like. What is the moral of this story? Oh no! You know, RJ it didn't say in in it anywhere one moral tale. It did not. It it didn't even claim to be a moral tale. It I know, it, but it did and here you are, and here up. and here and here you are. Yeah, and here I am. Here I am. What is the moral of this this story? But it wasn't even uh, over yet. I mean, there was like a quarter to go. I I think I had said that uh, after she got scammed by uh by the, yeah. by the big boy i was kind of like okay it's like is this movie just about raining shit on this woman yeah and then it, it does for a little bit more and then it just kind of ends and then you're like oh okay and not that it needs like a, a happy ending it, or a really sad ending where she uh she yuries it or anything let me like tell that. you i'm i'm, I'm, a, kinda, I'm a it just kind of ends i'm like i'm a fan of movies where like women get shit rained on them i like Lars von Trier's movies but he's, he's women like specifically um, Women specifically, that is one of uh, it's because I like large on cheer movies, and it's one of the oh, things okay. that he does, and that's one of the things he does. Uh, he's like he has like multiple films where this happens, but uh, I, I find his movies compelling. Uh, like Dancer and, in the Dark, you mean? Yeah, okay. Dancer in the Dark, Dogville, um, not so much Manderley, but Elements of Crime, um, Elements of 
Prime. Uh, no. We covered movie, it on this podcast. That, that movie, that movie is not at all that. It sucks actually. But Breaking the Waves is fantastic. Uh, is that about women getting shit on? Kind of, yeah. It's kind of it's, it's it's pretty rough to be a woman in the world of Lars von Trier. So you must so. be a big Agnes Varda fan. No. Oh no. Well, not really. We'll see. We've got a whole bunch of those coming up one of these days, but we do. So yeah, I'm like I am like I do like the subject matter, but uh, as far as like something to worth something to watch, I guess uh, I think it's a, a worthy subject matter uh, to be viewed. But this just isn't the one to watch. Uh, necessarily unless you're like again like i have found that the this criterion creeps project has greatly impacted my enjoyment of japanese movies impacted positively or negatively negatively oh because when you're not in the mood for a japanese movie is exactly when you have to watch six of them in a row yeah which seems to be the style at, at the time yes yeah John Criterion. Well, it's a it's a war movie. Is it Japanese? Yep. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the next two movies are. What? Yeah. The musical is. No, not not oh. for a couple a couple more weeks. Oh okay. Uh, but you no, know, the next two you know, more more uh, more time spent in Japan, RJ. Yeah. No, I I know what you mean though. It it, it does. Sometimes I don't care what. The Criterion stands say, sometimes you're not in the mood for two-hour-long subtitled film. Will I read subtitles? Yeah, I'll read them. Do I watch subtitles on English movies? Yes, I do. I do. But it's nice to not have to be dialed in the whole time. So when it's the day you're watching the Criterion movie, however long you put it off, I think Jared's usually a Tuesday nighter now because he's delaying it as, oh, as this much was, as this, possible. This was Monday. This was oh, day. okay. So that's early. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean. We push it off as much as we can, mm-hmm. and then and then we watch them. And I want to make sure it's fresh in my mind. Oh yeah, that's definitely uh, a thing. Too. I I mean, I watched this two days ago, uh, and then you sent me some screenshots from the movie, yeah. and I'm like, oh, we get right. This movie, <laughs> I forgot all about it. I have yeah, to talk I, about this. I did take. There was a lot of good screenshots actually, because it's people yep. talking about. People talking about fat people. Yeah, uh, using those words specifically. This this is our bread and butter. Yeah, it fits into the niche of our community. Um, anyways, yeah, I mean, I didn't like, I didn't mind it, but at yeah. the end of the day, I was kind of like, I don't know, man. I was like, we've seen in the in what we've been doing so far. How many of this movie have we seen so f- already? You know what I mean. Yeah, like, like <laughs> this, this, like you know, like Japanese entertaining woman who's like, you know, working with business class man, and like we've seen this exact movie probably um, six times. Well, I have a potentially a, a, a tag, but I'm not sure how many of these would be relevant. Uh, sex workers in the Criterion Collection. I this take my, that as such as well. My own little, my own little list, uh, mm-hmm. listy poo, because I, I think this would fall into that. Uh, but are you thinking of like Gate of Flesh, maybe? Yeah, probably Gate of Flesh. Yeah, that's one yeah. for sure. Um, I mean, Double Suicide, that like rollicking uh-huh. good time way back when. Remember that, RJ? I, I do. I very much do. Yeah. Oh, uh, God. Oh, what was this? Oh, yeah. Story of a Prostitute? Uh, yes, exactly. Comfort like... Woman. Yeah. Yeah, there you mm-hmm. go. What about um, what's the porno movie? Was that story of a prostitute, the one about making porn in Japan? Oh, yeah, uh, the pornographers. The pornographers. That no, one's not, a little bit different. That, that yeah, that's not, not. Yeah, that's not about. That's not about sex, right? That one's quite not quite. This, this one's like, and this is like, I was debating putting uh, when a woman ascends the stairs on this list because it is like a, it's like the temptation of it is there, and I'm like, this is borderline, but I feel like. The some of the other girls, the the implication is there that they are. Yeah. Yes. 
It's yeah. a gray area. It's, this is like more of a gray area than explicit. Yeah. Like, you no, know, this isn't a movie that says Kiko, a prostitute in Japan. Like, yeah. it's you know, she's she, she works at a place where it's a, it's a possibility because there's like the the degrees of like there's the there's the there's three levels of success uh, as an employee of this bar. You that could either more. have enough money to call a cab, mm-hmm. or you're taking the the train, or you're going home with a client. The midnight dun, train. Dun. Dun, dun, dun. To Georgia. Uh, yeah, those are those are the options. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's never. Uh, yeah, they do. They do. Um, kind of leave it open. It's never quite. It's there's a lot of implication. There's there's one scene where they do say geisha. I can't remember what the context of it is though. But it's some. Maybe it's when she's like. She's like talking about how she doesn't want to do it anymore. And she, I think she says like she doesn't want to be a geisha and like do that kind of stuff. I can't remember. They mentioned it at one point. But yeah, it's more just implied because those guys too, they're always like, hey, listen, I don't want to make you do anything you don't want to do. It's just, uh, you want the money or, or not? And you go, hey, Criterion. What do you mean? Pal? What are you talking about here? What do you mean, pal? So yeah, I I think I think this movie is fine. I don't have any strong opinions against it. Yeah, it's fine. I just it's like I said. I feel like we've watched this movie like a bunch of times already. <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. It's very, very much like Tin Drum. Almost exactly, exactly the same. Exactly the same movie. It's almost exactly the same. Yeah. So, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So yeah. I mean, I thought we just watched the movie last week with the 49th parallel. I mean, it's, it's at least that was something different. Can't at least we what, had French people. I can't believe what Lawrence Olivier was doing with those Nazis. Oh, oh, oh. like that, that kind yeah. of thing. Troubling, oh. very troubling. That's a pop sound that French people make. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I feel like there's people who could be really on board with this out there. They don't oh, I'm sure a lot of people love this movie. And they're, and they're definitely not turning to us to uh, give the okay. Mm. I don't know. I see a lot of people love it. They'll be like, oh, it's what a turmoil she's trying. And then the life is hitting her. And then she gets scanned and the life hits her again. And man, it's hard uh, being a, um, a working ma- uh, woman. In uh, man. On, uh, woo, woo man on the uh, on the stairmaster, and it's like, yeah, I get it, I do. On the, on the stairmaster. Whoa, whoa, man. Mm-hmm. You know that you know that old chestnut, Joe. Yeah, you we did we did it, Joe. So uh, RJ, you want to hear about who hates these movies? Sure. I mean, and that's like, I don't hate it. I think it's fine. I just. Well, would you agree with Lance? <laughs> with a one with a half star review, just summarized. Nah. I mean, nah. Lance could be on to something. He could be on to something. One of Lance's favorite movies is, um, a Toy Story short. He five starred it. Forky asks a question. Forky? That's not Forky. <laughs> That's not if that's not um quality, I don't know what it is. Bud? What about uh one of Lance's favorite films, Sinara from nineteen thirty two? Is it about Frank Sinara? Starring Ronald Coleman. Oh, I mean that might be good. Hey, Lance just Lance half starred The Way of Water, Avatar two. Can you believe it? Fuck. Lance also half starred the new Hellraiser film. And the new Matrix film. And the new Resident Evil film. Lance has a lot of followers. Lance does have a lot of followers. Way more than we do. Lance Lubelski. Well, maybe he won't after this. No. Maybe people will see this harrowing depict. Oh, he gave half stars to Below? Johnny Depp's Below? Oh, well, movie's not that great. But Ray Liotta's incredible bad. in that movie. Um, but it's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. Ray Liotta's incredible they, the, in the... that movie. <laughs> The, the best real the best Ray Liotta movie after Goodfellas is Narc. And then Blow. And then Blow. Blow's third. Okay. Yeah. Uh how about I don't know. Uh, 
man, these are long-winded bastards. Do the fun ones. Um, okay, well, there's like Demo Suzuki, uh, two stars. I don't get it. Whatever people find compelling and great in this is lost on me. The characters are blank. The images are bland. The tone is flat and constant all the way through. Uh, whatever it is that everyone finds interesting, and this was not interesting to me. I would definitely not say that this movie was bland looking. Is that again it's really well photographed? It's a nice looking movie. Yeah, it does look good. We no. got to front end the compliments so people keep listening all the way through, so we get monetized. That's um, right. Very important. This, this guy's from Winter Pig. Uh, and here's their bio. My favorite trivia. Steel produced before the detonation of the first atomic bombs is required for the production of sensitive equipment like Geiger counters and medical apparatus due to its lack of contamination. It is called low background steel and is commonly sourced from old German ships. Fuck. Did you get all that? No. This person just five starred Avatar 2, The Way of Water. Hell yeah. We're getting some polarizing things. Oh, they and they four and a half starred Avatar 2, The Way of the Water. They, they've been watching this fucking thing like crazy, dude. They, well, I mean, that's why it's going to make uh, all the money. It was awesome, though. Made me cry, TBH. Stupid movie. Whatever. Damn. <laughs> uh, how about Teacher Nate? Nate? Nat. Okay. Two stars. I'm not trying to be mean, but after three of his films, I'm dubbing Nuruse the second rate Ozu. Wow. Um, his know. films are very similar, but a bit worse. <laughs> this one is supposedly his masterpiece, but while a new French, uh, while a new French new wave influence is now evident. I much preferred the less flashy Sound of the Mountain, 1954, and Floating Clouds, 1955. Uh, this one reminded me of Mizuguchi's Street of Shame from 1956 in that it felt like a systematic but cold social critique that's rather uninspiring on an emotional level. Noruse keeps hitting the same points again and again, unfortunately beating the issue to death. Who hasn't? This day and age? Mm hmm. This day and age, Jarrett? Mm hmm. See the right. price of chicken breasts? Oh my god, have you seen the price of cauliflower? Out your fucking ass, man. It's like eight, eight, nine bucks. Well, these guys in this movie, they want a piece of that ass. Oh my god. Uh, Teacher Nat half starred Raw, which I'm on board with, but then they also half starred Lawrence of Arabia. Jarrett, a half a star. A half a star. They have five star movies like Ron and High and Low and other stuff. Other stuff. They always do. They always do. They always do. Hey, and I just saw that uh, Actium Jackson Maximus is a two, two and a half star review, which is actually a very high review for uh, Jackson. I haven't seen Actium Jackson Maximus log a movie in many moons. He's out there. What do you think he's going to give Avatar to? I think he just like logged a movie today. He watched Avatar 2 today? No, he watched well, he watched Spirited Away yesterday. Oh. But what do you think he's going to well, give Avatar just, to? Just so you're aware, he's already at 12 films this year. Jesus. How many of them are abstract short films? Uh, I'll let you decide. I'm going to say 11 of those 12. Uh, Everything close. except Spirited Away. Did he watch Grumpy Old Men? Uh, not yet. Uh, we'll wait for him to report back on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. Where do you think this r ranks between Ivtioli and Forbidden Games? <laughs> on your list? I, yeah. I, I don't even know what those are. What about Tout va bien? Again, you're, 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 I don't know what language you're speaking here. Okay, so uh, Jackson uh, only managed to watch 1,500 hours of films uh, in 2022 and logged 2,785. No. Yeah. No, don't that's don't, not true. Uh, don't question it. It's true. That's, it's not true. 
Why do you lie? What? Why? What do you get out of you, lying so what, much? What, what do you What do you lie, guy? Why do you, Why do you lie? Okay, I, I, I only I only watched a mere uh, four hundred and forty two hours of film in comparison. I think mine was like ten minutes. Ten so. minutes worth. Yeah. You know where I'm gonna put this here? Right between Mister Arkadin and Masculine Feminine. Not bad. Excellent. An excellent uh, vintage, sir. <laughs> and it's right beside Redbeard and Vagabond, also, right where it should be. Right where it belongs. Yeah, good stuff. This list is pointless. But I'm not going to stop. It's all pointless. Yeah, that's true. I feel like people are really going to get real upset that eh, we're not loving this, but... It's fine. I think it's fine. I just... Yeah. I don't know. I got a lot of good screenshots from it. That's a compliment. There you go. The highest compliment. Screenshots. Screenshots. You know how I take my screenshots now, Jarrett? Could you hmm. tell by the quality of the pictures? No. When I'm watching the movie at home at nighttime and I see something I like, I just I, I hit rewind 10 seconds and then I hold up my cell phone and I take a picture of it sitting from the couch. Wow. Uh, I was couldn't able tell because well, the high quality of the pictures, my, right? My, my new laptop doesn't like me screenshotting uh, videos off of see? browsers. It's, see, it's not... It's called like, to me now. I didn't have that problem before, and now it's got me. See, and it wasn't you, but a lot of people kept trying to offer me solutions to that. They're like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I said, baby, I've done it all. You can't, they, all these things have new guards against screenshotting. It's just, it's over. It's over. Yeah, we blew it, man. We blew it. They blew it. I was the only one using the screenshots for good. True. You know what I mean? Oh well. Well, any final thoughts on when a woman ascends stairs? I think it, it is a fine movie. It's fine. And I never want to see it again. Yep. Pretty much. Ever. Ever. Not even the poster. Don't ever no. show it to me again. No. What about Marcel Duchamp's uh new descending a staircase? What about that? A nude descending a staircase? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds alright. What's the moral of that one? Uh, none. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm like, we're going to get a live reaction of RJ seeing this, this painting. This work oh. of art. What's that Is kid? there a moral to it? Uh, there could be. There you go. Okay, let me see. This is from 1912. <sighs> this is a famous painting, you say? Yep. Get the fuck out of here. You know, you know, you know about... You know about cubism? I know about cubism. You know about Picasso? I know that he was blue, Abadi, but it yeah. died. Okay, here's another one. Here's another Marshall Duchamp. You tell me what you see. So this is again one of the most uh I don't know, land one one of those landmarks in uh modern art. I'm gonna say it's a urinal, but I feel like that's not the right answer. Uh no, you're you are correct. But why is there a spout pointing towards the person who's using hey, the urinal? Exactly. You got it. You figured it out. So, so what is he? So what we call it's what we call a ready-made RJ. It's called fountain, and it's signed. Did you see? It's a piece of art. R. Mutt, nineteen seventeen. This was shown at a uh, the Armory show in Chicago, I believe. Did anyone use it for pissing? Uh they could have. I mean, and then, then what happens? Well, then what I mean, happens? What I mean. Did anyone test this thing out for pissing? Uh, maybe. Did anyone? I'm pissed? pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that these guys there there were some lewd boys back when. Or you think he did more than piss in it? Who knows? Do you think he tried to make brown in the urinal? He could have. Oh my god! <laughs> and by that I mean he was super dehydrated. So his urine was brown. Uh, I mean, the, people are getting some unexpected uh, value here. Uh, this was the last thing he ever made. Uh, okay. This, this is, is peep- usually after this, this, Amber. The, 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 I know. This is a peephole that you look into. Um, What's that? That's a body. But is it a giant? Uh, it's, a, you, you, it's like tiny. Like you or... look into it. And you're like you're looking into this little. Uh, it could be snow in a bank. 
a temps donné. It could be snow in a bank. You know what I mean? It could just be snow. I think it's just snow. I don't think this, there's anything weird there. This this this, this 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 dude fucked with all kinds of stuff. Here's another one for you. It's fa it's interesting to me that I mean of course you have no idea who Marcel Duchamp is, but uh, yeah, I don't uh have here, here's, so here so, so here's okay. I'm gonna send you this. I'm not gonna tell you the title. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is it. So this is uh in his uh, surrealist days, I guess. Um, from he made this for like about eight years. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I worked on this for eight years, from like 1915 to 1923. Uh, the title of this work, okay. The Bride Stripped Bare by Her Bachelors, even. I was going to say this looked like a like a gaucho restaurant, like yeah. where the meat's on like a, a spinner. Like kind of thing that they like shave off. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I got out of this. <laughs> okay. Well, there yeah. you go. And then now the title is a little bit more disturbing, right? What is a title? I just told you. Want me to say it again? No, I said what is a title. What is a title? Exactly. Yes. These are things you should wonder about. What is a title? What, what about those little cards you see at the uh, the art gallery? Little, little, little show cards that people go to immediately when they want to read the description of what the work's supposed to be. Are you saying that you got to just go in there dry, look at it, and just say, this well, is my opinion, I, and, and I quote, go in there dry. Well, yeah, into the art scene. You're not going to go in there moist. We could. Hey, well, that's I've, I've going to ruin the I've, art. I've you, seen, you don't I've, want saturation I've seen, the I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen people come barefoot out of a river into an art gallery before. Was it a statement? Like an art statement? Probably. But those are the people you just don't talk to. If it was someone doing it unironically, I would have I would have been okay it, with uh, it. It's pretty unironic. But it was a part of an art statement, though? Yeah. Yeah, it went from you know, ironic to un to unironic. The price master changed me, but I think I'm back to art isn't real. Okay. Oh, he got you for a little bit. He for he bit. got you going. Yeah, I I did. Uh, I saw the end of the rainbow for a bit, but I I'm back now. Okay, yeah. it's not real. Okay. It's not real. Uh, there's another good one. Uh, uh, Marcel Duchamp is fun to talk about. It's okay. You, this is if anyone's still listening to this, that's part of the real I, podcast thing. I don't know if you. I don't know if you, you have to like. You might have to zoom in on this one. Okay. Um. This this works in title with a goatee. Well, it's like, it's just a mustache. Okay. Oh no, there's a little. Oh, there's a goatee there too. Uh, ah. Yeah. yeah. That, but this this is called L H O O Q from 1919. You know what this reminds me of. This is like a uh, like a baseball cards uh, deface. Remember what you yeah. Saying? Well, not even that. I was like this. This kind of quality of work is like a is like a comic strip, like family circus thing, where it's just like the little kid like paints on the Mona Lisa, and it's like it's art, but then it turns around that it's being sold for for money or something. I don't know. He's old. Old Duchamp was uh, aware of the scam. Uh, yeah, he was aware. Even he didn't think it was real. No, absolutely not. Oh, okay. That's why. He, that's why he took a urinal, put it on a special. He's the guy. He's the. He's the guy you have to blame for making this acceptable. That's all. That's what I gotta say. But the thing is, though, he could also make incredible stuff. <laughs> like he had I've the yet skill. To see it. What are you talking about? But the uh, the Mona Lisa with the goatee. No, I'm talking like no the 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 sculpture the uh, the the, the people the sculpture the people sculpture. And uh, oh. the painting, it's like, he's obviously a, a pretty technically uh, able I feel like I man. could do both of those pretty that's easily. The, that's kind of the idea, RJ. That's kind of the idea. You're picking up on what he's laying down. I think I could definitely sculpt a body. Uh, could so. you? Okay. Yeah. I, I look didn't forward say what to, I was going to sculpt. I, 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 look, I look forward to what you pull off. Yeah, I mean... It's kind of a it's kind of like a work in process. How long did you say his one thing took? Eight years. Yeah, yeah. Fiddling. Okay. So, he, he he was fiddling a little bit. Okay, so give me eight years, and I might have something. Yeah, you can go ask go ask Andy about uh, Marcel Duchamp. No, 
She doesn't want to talk about that guy. Oh, yeah. He also played chess. He, like, stopped making art for uh, pretty much for a really long time and just played chess. Oh, was that the game from uh, um, The Queen's Gambit? Yep. Oh, cool. The, the, the one that, that Netflix invented? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Netflix people are so yeah. smart. Look look at the look at these great pieces of art. You got the fountain, you've got bicycle wheel on a stool. <laughs> Good stuff. Good, he says. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, it might be good, but it's not real. Okay. And oh. At least we can agree on that. <laughs> uh, oh, see, this should be like a live show. Art Jarrett shows yeah, RJ I know. things. You know we're still we're still in the review part of this that's fine that's fine okay what do you think about, what do you think about this robert rauschenberg uh i don't mind that it's like a goat with a tire on it's it. an, it's, okay. an, it's an angora gold well, uh angora goat uh with a tire around its waist yeah i'm, I'm on board with it's that. standing on a painting it's called it's a work called monogram yeah I, i'm on board with that because okay. the goat represents um society Goats. yeah he found that goat off like the side of the road i think or like a flea market he was like yeah i'm gonna do something with that yeah yeah a, i'm on board a, com- a, com- a combine painting oh oh he, yeah he i could be- do that yeah there you go i could find a goat somewhere there you go yeah maybe they'll, they'll be our next podcast jared and rj do art history oh we'll do a road show okay yeah you can hit me with random stuff that and be like what the fuck is this Okay. And, which is what's called art isn't real it it will be called art isn't real yeah it's incredible people pay big money for that big bucks i think i i i am in the the right side of history here so <laughs> we'll see after the break yeah uh, we, we just keep going back up those stairs we're gonna hit that meal ticket one of these days art isn't real we'll take off Coming, coming to Poughkeepsie in coming. fall 2024. I've been telling you guys, you're just not listening. <laughs>